Hey there, my friends. Dr. Groovy Scott Grove, GroovyMusicLessons.com. Um, number one, just so you guys can write it below, and I'm going to say thanks in advance, but um, exactly at this time that I'm recording it, which is 12.05 in the morning. Um, all right, now, I want to get it on tape. Okay, I am now officially 52 years old. 52, that's right. Happy birthday to me. And thanks for everybody that says happy birthday below. I appreciate that already, and I'm not going to respond to all the thank yous, but because I know all you guys are going to be gracious enough to do so, and just don't if you don't feel like it. Um, but I know you will. You guys are awesome. Um, again, yeah, it's trust ride time, and I'm going to make as many videos as it takes as the years go by. A lot of people just don't look at um, old videos for some reason, and I don't care what that reason is. Um, had another guy ask me, he's just like, you know, well, some people are just good at some things, and some people are good at others, and I guess I just keep letting my buddy work on it. It's like, I will not have that. <laughs> um, so I'm going to do um, more segments on trust rod things, because they're, you know, not just that, but everything, again, and then smaller segments, or not actually smaller segments, but just on the truss rod, not on a whole bunch of stuff linked to it. The truss rod is, for some reason, the most scary thing to people who own guitars. Um, this has nothing to do with anything, so let's get that out of the way. This is my favorite guitar of all time. This is my Warhorse Pink Paisley Strat from way back when. And it has seen... Um, Everything. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to show you my two and a half favorite truss rods. Number one, the bullet. I mean, you can just see right where everything goes. That's like, um, you know, when women finally started shaving, and all of a sudden you could see the little man on the boat without having to, you know, part the dark sea of uh, seagrass or seaweed, whatever that stuff is. I mean, yeah, you, right there's a little guy. You just stick it in the hole and go to town. Um, as far as more uh, modern things here on the Dillion Mozart. Um, speaking of the Dillion, I got my new uh, custom-made one coming in here. Just when I get back from Indiana, that's these things. Um, yeah, you guys have seen them all. The little wheel built built in right there. You get right to it. I hate the old stuff, the old fenders, where you have to take the entire neck off, blah, blah, blah. And people still make them that way, so they'll be vintage and still a pain in the ass. Um, don't buy that stuff. If you have to take the neck off your guitar and you can't make the adjustments while the strings are at tension and all that, there is no reason for that. It's just, I'm going to say, it's just stupid to own a guitar like that. If it is vintage, you can't do shit about it. But if you go buy a new one that is supposed to replicate vintage shit, and they include the vintage thing here where you can't get to it unless you completely take your guitar apart, um, you're a moron. Plain and simple. I'm, I'm sorry. But no, I'm not. <laughs> you're a fucking moron. Anyway, so what is the best truss rod? The best truss rod is no truss rod, which comes in graphite next which never need to be adjusted ever because you can't adjust them because they're going to be perfect forever. Why doesn't every guitar in the world have it? No idea because you all um, want guitars to be fucked up and fuck upable um, no matter where you travel to. Um, and you're like, I don't want it. It's like, I know, but enough people around you do. Um, it has been perfected and people don't want perfection. Why? Because, as a general rule, um, people are retarded. And, I mean, look at the race for the U.S., uh, <laughs> the Hillary and Trump thing going right now for their president. That's as retarded as it gets. I mean, again, you're, you're voting for a, uh, what is it, a giant turd or a douche? Oh, a giant douche or a turd sandwich, I think the people from um, South Park call it. Okay. See, I told you it's going to be nice and long and windy. Uh, five minutes, I haven't told you shit about it. Okay, a truss rod. There it is. You can see it. Okay, the rod, all it is is a bent piece of metal, usually steel, and it is like most people's penis. It is kind of curved. Okay, and it is like this, 
and it's actually up this way and when you turn it it just barely goes one way or back here so it's actually bent like this and I'm going to tell you exactly what it does even though every guitar company and every luthier out there um, most of them I think about 90% of luthiers are completely retarded and I'll tell you why in a minute because I love to show you why because you don't need to be taking your shit to them because they don't know what the fuck they're doing okay um you've got this um what a truss rod does is this despite you're going to read no that's not what it does yes this is exactly what a truss rod does it will every luthier will say otherwise but dr groovy is not wrong and <laughs> this is what it does. When you tighten that truss rod, it means you stick the appropriate tool in there. Some are not like this. Gibsons are use a box um, wrench thing that cram on there as ovations do and other things. And some use, you know, the ones down here. You know, you can stick anything in there. But on the fender I'm showing you, you put it. Allen Ranch in there, and if you righty tighty, that curved penis is going to do this. It's actually okay, you can see it there. I'm going to show you. Okay, let's put it right against my face so we can get some uh, contrast. It's actually going to do that. Okay, watch it. Watch the low E string again. Let's see, let's get it so you can see it just like that. Okay, I'm going to tighten the truss rod. Okay, virtual tightening, but this is actually showing you what happens. Here you go. Three, two, and uh, one. There you go. The middle of the neck just went against your string. So it rose up to meet your strings. That is exactly what happened. The truss rod is actually inside the neck. So when you tighten it up, the neck actually changes shape and goes up to meet your strings. They will tell you otherwise, but that is exactly what it does. Look, <laughs> there it is. Let's tighten it. Boing, it just went up and met my strings. If you tighten it too much, your strings, it'll actually have your strings laying on there. If your strings are laying on there, guess what? Loosen it. You don't have to do much. Try just like a little, yeah, and see how it does. Always make like little one turn increments. Try it out while sitting down in playing position. Always make all of your adjustments while you're sitting down in playing position. And again, I will show you why the luthiers are dipshits in a second, and it's exactly because of that reason. Well, it's because they have what is called a cradle. You know, it's a piece of wood that sits on their bench and your neck sits in there. And they try to make adjustments while it's sitting like this. While your neck is bowed. And they try to <laughs> straighten out your fret, straighten out your truss rod and everything while your guitar is already bent. But then when you put it in regular playing position, it's all fucked up. Why? Because they did it laying like this. Your guitar bends very easy like that. It doesn't up and down this way at all. But your dent, your neck, do this, see. If you take your neck back and forth like, you know, this, like you would lay it on a table, you know, and have the cradle here. I'll show you this here in just a second, and we'll get to it. Um, it's going to go very flat on, uh, flat on you. If you lay it on a table, but don't have a cradle, and you just let the neck go like this, just off the side of a counter, just kind of lay like that, it's going to go very, very sharp, and you're going to think you have it up high enough, so that the, you know, tightened enough so that the action is nice and good, but not against your strings. Then you pick it up and play it, then it's all of a sudden, it's fucked up. It's way too high for you to play. Um, that's what happens when luthiers use a cradle, and use it to actually set your action, to poly to do everything with your frets, to adjust your truss rod, but your <laughs> do everything in playing position, like this. Every adjustment to your neck, you must do that way. Cause look. Mm -hmm. That's just 
the play in the net going backward and forward. The tremolo is locked, I mean tighter than brick. Look at this. You can't. The bar is on air for show. Okay, and so I won't lose it. Um, no, this thing is blocked as solid as a rock. So. Um, so here's your play. And I use that all the time. Is it safe to do that? Hell yes! Yeah, a piece of wood with steel on it. Um, and it's maple wood. If that's rose wood on the front, fine. But if it's that's mahogany on the neck, that could break. That'd be a Gibson. That's why they break all the time. Shitty mahogany wood. Shitty mahogany wood. Gibson's break. Why? Shitty mahogany wood and 14 to 17 degree angles on the back. Shitty design. Still around. Okay. So, back to truss rods. <laughs> Um, okay, let's show you how bad this does it. Let's get the uh, people out of the way who are the morons, who are the luthiers. Um, and people are always like, well, you always say stuff, Dr. Groovy, but you never actually show it or prove it. Well, then you're asking for a longer video if you won't take my word. Okay, is that my, is that my tuner over there? I see a microphone. Where's that at? Oh, that's up on the damn stand. <laughs> um, I'm not any good with this flipping camera. Where's my tuner? Okay, right there on top of that. There we go. Amplifier is a tuner. Okay. I'm going to point it so you can see that the tuner, whatever's in tune. If it goes to the white part, then it's in tune. There we go. Hey. So I'm going to run through all the strings. Okay, we're good. Nice, that white light comes on. See? I'll creep with the D string up and because everything's so perfect. And I've got the guitar in playing position. It is not if any other way. Okay, everything is perfect. Okay, now what do I do? How do I do this to prove to you anything? I'm just going to, uh, yeah, I got to find my way. I actually do have two exact cameras now. I could run two of them. But I am just going to take this guitar, lay it right here on this stool, and the neck is sticking out. Okay? Just like that. It's just laying on a stool with no support on the neck at all. So it's just laying there. So under the weight of that, only the neck, which is not much, but it makes a difference. Okay, there's the thing. I, I, you know, I should have set up both cameras, but screw it. Okay, so here you go. D string that I did so nice. Oh, uh, why do you know it's way sharp? A, way sharp. Look at that. That's how much off all this bullshit is. Okay, now I am going to simply step in front and put. I'll do. I don't know if I can get back to the camera if I do this or not, but I just want to show you the play the other way, the ones that the luthiers use. So I better do that if I'm going to call every fucking luthier a dumbass. Because I have to. Because they are. They have their cradle. And the cradle will rock. Okay, so I'm doing nothing but putting, using my hand as the cradle. That's all I'm doing. Nothing, I'm not pushing on strings up here. I'm just doing that. And there's the tuner. Let's see if I can just if you can see the tuner from here, I'm just going to... Okay, not bad. Oh, flat. 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 So, I don't know if you guys can see that, but if you can't, same thing. I guess you get the trust that I'm not faking you out. Why would I fake you out and try to do things? But here's... Okay, flat. <laughs> Position flat, really flat, flat. I mean, and it, and they make adjustments when it's in that position, when it is on the cradle. So they're over there making adjustments to your truss rod, or they're 
evening out your frets, you know, putting a level on there, making sure they're all cool. When things are bent or when they're laying flat or anything, no, it has to be like this in playing position for it to be right and have exact pressure on the neck. Even if it has no strings on it, the only way you can do it is actually to have a cradle and then something else on here to put the same amount of pressure that is on the neck. It would have to put it on the neck. So you would actually have to have the cradle there and then um, something here to tighten it and put the pressure of the strings on the neck in order to make it happen. And they don't have those tools. They are tools. Okay, so that proves that. So again, I'll make as many of these as I have to. Okay, with this particular setting on the camera, I get another few minutes. But anyway, so say your strings are laying on top of your fretboard like this and it's just buzz, 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 or nothing. It's just like, um, like you know, you play every single note and it's the same note. You just simply put your wrench or your Allen wrench or your box wrench or whatever you're using, back it off. Just a quarter turn or just one little thing, check it, play again, and keep doing that. You know which way to go because if you loosen it, it takes the middle of the neck, not here, not here, but right here in the fat belly part, and it moves the strings um, the strings stay where they're at. It moves the neck towards your strings or away from your strings. It's the neck that is moving, not the strings. Every luthier will tell you it's the strings that are moving. The strings aren't moving. <laughs> they're right fucking there. Okay, so it's the neck that's moving. That's why it's inside the neck. They're like, that's the wrong, wrong definition, Dr. Groovy. It's like, no, nope, it's the right one. Fucked hard. <laughs> okay, again, so if you have this, I'm going to loosen the truss rod now, okay? Watch the strings. Okay? Look at that. They're way off the neck. So, if you need them off the neck in the middle, loosen it. Now, as we tighten the truss rod, the, the neck starts to go towards the strings. And again, if you go too much, it will fart out against the frets. Okay? That's it. That's all there is to a truss rod. It doesn't affect anything here. It doesn't affect anything here. It's what's going on in the middle. You just look at it. If the and if the strings are laying on the middle of the neck, loosen it. Get make it go make the neck go away from the strings. Okay? By loosening it. Make it go away. Lose it. Lose it. Loosen. Loosen. Righty tighty means it's going to fit tighter, tighter against the strings. It's going to go right towards your strings. So that's all the truss rod is. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be afraid of turning it, you know, any way. It, if you buy a guitar and tune it, or, I'm sorry, put your um, wrench in the socket and it's doing nothing, tighten it, tighten it, tighten it until it, and see if it finally grabs. If it does grab something, you know, make sure it's uh, actually going to grab something. Uh, check that out first. Have them check it if you need to, but you can do it. Just put a wrench in there. Make sure it will tighten up so you know that you don't have a broken or stripped truss rod. Because a lot of them will come to you and they loosen the truss rod for some reason or it rattles loose while it's on the plane from South Korea to America. Make sure it catches and then when you do tighten it, that it, the neck starts moving or the fingerboard or the fretboard if you guys want to call it that. It's actually a fingerboard. But, I'll tell you about that later. Um, and no, you can't call it whatever you want. <laughs> Not in my presence. And the uh, fingerboard will move towards the strings. Make sure it does that, then you can buy the guitar. But if it doesn't, um, that's gonna cost a shitload of money on shitty guitars with set necks and through necks because you can't put a new neck on there for 80 bucks like you can bulldogs. Um, makes it great, bulldogs, they rock. Um, so again, just test it, make sure it does this, and then, hell, wind it, you know, three or four times till it actually hits the strings. Make sure it has enough room to do that, okay? You're going to lay down the money, man. Make sure it's right. And then back it back off to where it is correct when it's in tune. You have to retune 
between every adjustment just to make sure because it's going to make a little bit of a uh, difference on the um, actual amount of pressure on your strings but just it's that easy make sure you're in tune adjust it if you want the middle of the neck to go towards your strings or loosen it to give the action a little higher by the neck going away from the strings that's all a truss rod is don't be afraid of it kick its ass play with it don't worry about breaking it you're not going to break the thing okay that's it dr groovy proven shit to you proven shit to the stupid ass luthiers and that is it folks if you find an easier explanation out there um hey good luck to you okay so uh, I don't want to seem like a pompous ass, but I am one. And again, happy birthday, Dr. Groovy. 52 years old today. So, go play with your rods. Pretend it's your birthday. Ooh, ooh. Later.